This is the Solid Signal Podcast for the week of March 20th, 2023. And the subject for this week is HD Radio. What happened? Does anybody even remember HD Radio? HD Radio is a system that was originally started, believe it or not, way back in the early 2000s, about 2002, that HD Radio was first proposed as a potential replacement for AM Radio. AM radio, as I think that we all know, is a kind of a very limiting technology. It's the original form of broadcast media, and it goes back over 100 years at this point. AM radio has some benefits because it takes very little power to broadcast a signal, and therefore, with the amount of power that's allowed, you can get really, really good propagation. 500 miles is not impossible with an AM radio. And that is why there are channels that are specifically designated for civil defense purposes, so that if you need to have specific information, that you know that these channels are not going to have interference across different cities. They're just going to be ones that you can get from a long distance. AM radio was, as you can imagine, incredibly popular in the age when there was no such thing as live broadcast media. And Believe it or not, uh, it's it's going to be kind of a surprise to today's generation, but uh, AM radio was actually still very popular into the 1960s and 1970s. A lot of of cars came with AM-only radios, budget-friendly ones, and it wasn't until that period of time that AM radio started to lose ground to FM radio, which has, you know, better sound quality, which is more important for the kind of music that was being put out at the time. FM radio, of course, today has been eclipsed very much by streaming. And uh, well, of course, there are people who still listen to FM radio all the time. But on the other hand, it's not the only way to listen to radio anymore. There's There's satellite radio, there's streaming. And of course, you can just bring your own tunes with you, something that was not popular or not possible uh, until really until the 1970s. And certainly not in the way that we do it now until about 10 years ago. But let's before I get into HD radio, let's talk just a tiny little bit more about AM radio. AM radio is kind of on the ropes. It's been on the ropes for some time, and it's partially because of the sound quality and partially because people have become more accustomed to FM radio. In recent years, AM radio, as we all know, has become more of a home for talk stations and especially kind of controversial ones. And that has suited the AM broadcast format very well. However, what we're finding is that even with all the other challenges that we have to AM radio, there's a new problem. It turns out that the emissions that are created by electric motors, specifically the kind that are used in cars, interfere with AM radio. You could probably shield them out, but there is no legal requirement to do it. And since there's no legal requirement for uh, there to be any sort of radio in cars and no requirement for any sort of shielding to stop AM radio interference, you're just finding that electric cars, which are increasing in popularity all the time, generally cannot receive AM radio. A lot of people thought this would be the nail in the coffin for AM radio, and I'm not quite sure that that's true. But what I can say is that it makes HD radio more important, at least temporarily. And that's where we get into HD radio. HD radio is a technology that uses a previously unused part of the FM spectrum, just outside the part where the you regularly broadcast FM radio, just to the, to the left or to the right of it, if you think of it that way, to send a compressed digital signal that takes up so little space on the FM band that it really isn't a problem. Oftentimes, HD radio stations are just simulcasts of AM stations, but with higher quality. Not all the time, but oftentimes. And it's become something that if, if you want your talk radio on your electric car, you're going to go to an HD radio version of it. And that has kept HD radio going. That and the fact that HD radio is just built into a lot of cars, much in the same way that XM radio is. But unlike Sirius XM, what you're finding is 
that HD radio continues to work where Sirius XM, obviously the free trial expires and a lot of people don't pick it up. A lot of people do, but a lot of people don't. So where do we stand with HD radio? You know, it, it's the sad thing is a lot of folks don't even know what it is. They don't, they don't even know it's available. Solid Signal used to carry HD radio receivers. We don't anymore. Why? Because there just aren't that many out there. Um, the ones that are out there are lower quality, and they're just there isn't this huge number of receivers out there. And you know, I'm I'm as much of a home audio fan as anybody else. And when I went looking for a home audio receiver, I didn't care about HD radio. I'll be really perfectly honest with you. Um, the home audio receiver that I ended up buying doesn't have HD radio built in. And you would think at this point that pretty much all of that those would come with HD radio. And the truth is they don't. HD radio is a perfect example of something that sadly um, the industry thought that people wanted and they didn't. You know, the, what, the idea for HD radio was kind of hatched in the days of high definition television coming in. And that's kind of why they called it HD radio. There was another technology at that time called HD DVD. Uh, that didn't succeed either, by the way. But the idea was, hey, if people are willing to trade up and their televisions for better quality, let's see if they will trade up this other thing and get better quality too. Like I said, it didn't work. And why didn't it work? Because at the time, uh, television was a very, very popular medium. I get it. Today, there's a whole generation that watches stuff on their phones and maybe doesn't even have a television in their home or doesn't have a live TV package. Um, that's that's totally cool. But when you look at the time in the early 2000s, TV was dominant. I mean, there was no streaming video. There wouldn't be streaming video for another 10 years or so. So, you know, live TV was kind of it. I mean, we were just barely in the DVR era. People were excited about better quality, and especially when you look back at what the quality was on those tube TVs, uh, you know, you, you realize HD was a really big jump at that point. Now, the, the quality difference with HD radio really is very obvious. Even with talk stuff, it's super obvious. And if you, if you do have HD radio in your car and you can find an HD radio station, you'll know what I'm talking about. A lot of car radios will automatically switch to the HD feed if they know it's available. And so you may not even realize how bad the quality of AM radio actually is. But I guess when it comes right down to it, by the early 2000s and certainly today, you know, AM radio and all broadcast radio is experiencing a lot of constriction anyway. It's just not the popular medium that it once was people bring their music or they stream their music and you know that the the kind of thing that kept radio going for a long time was traffic reports and people get that now from google maps or ways it just isn't that important so when it came down to offering something that was better quality even if it was free people just didn't necessarily care and there's a lesson there, by the way. Um, you know, there's all sorts of new technologies that come out all the time. And some of them succeed in the marketplace and some of them don't. And sometimes it's hard to know why something doesn't succeed because you think, oh, well, it really should. Uh, I will go back to the idea of HD DVD, which probably should have succeeded where Blu-ray failed. It really was a better format for a lot of reasons, but it didn't. When it comes down to a lot of things, though, the reason that something succeeds or fails is because there is no reason to switch over to it. Um, the term we used to use was killer app. There's just nothing there that makes people want to go there. No, nothing that really makes a difference. If there were some specific thing that were available on HD radio and wasn't available anywhere else, people might get one. But that never happened with HD radio, and the chances are it's never going to happen. It's just going to go on the scrap heap eventually with things like mobile digital television, which is a technology you've probably never heard of, and a lot of other things that may or may not ever succeed. That's the nature of the consumer electronics business. It's not always 
better technology, it's better content that usually makes the difference. And if that content isn't there, then the customers simply will not follow. Anyway, that's kind of my rant for this week. Why did I even bother picking on HD radio? Well, truth is that I'd kind of forgotten that it existed and then somebody reminded me of it and I was embarrassed that I had forgotten that it existed. So I decided I'll do a podcast on it because chances are you've forgotten it existed too and it might be kind of entertaining. But that's where we are this week. I hope, by the way, that you will like, comment, and subscribe always makes me look good to my bosses. Uh, I, I like to put out the best possible content, and it helps me to know that there are people out there who are listening and enjoying. Uh, always looks good there. And more importantly, do me a favor and shop at SolidSignal.com for everything that you need to live your best digital life. They are the sponsors of this podcast, and they pay my paycheck, so naturally, I'm very, very loyal. If you have a question about the great stuff that you'll find at SolidSignal.com or anything else in the technical arena, call the experts. They're here at 888-233-7563 during East Coast business hours, and I'm talking about folks who will actually answer the phone, folks in our Novi, Michigan corporate offices who do not read scripts, who instead really know their stuff and are here to give you as much free advice as you need before, during, or after the sale. Finally, last thing, if you happen to find yourself in the Palm Beach area this week, come to Flagler Drive and check out the Palm Beach International Boat Show. Look for a Signal Connect at booth 580, and you'll have a great time. You'll get to see all the latest technologies there, and hopefully ones that will continue to stick as time goes on. Have a great week, and there will be more next week on the Solid Signal Podcast.